They got seven days to kill me. I got seven days to live. They need me to take me out, but uh, I got too much to give. To give. They sabotage the lights, work on this underdog. That's the reason why I gotta do it over mad. They got my dreams started wrong on the off foot. Retaliation is about to get out of hand. I was never a young boy as a stillborn. I couldn't dream of being. It explains all the demons and imps that I was seeing in the corner. I didn't put myself in time out. They had me cornered. They jacked up and let me get out to see the truth. A matter of the fact that I, though a youth, was sent here to make them die. Started slaying, often curses one by one. I saw the darkness decrease by the rise of the sun. Back up came chasing. Hot all around my trail Determined to the end to see the plan of God fail But now I stand here determined Strangling doubt On the wrong side of the bridge that brought me out I've escaped past sins I've already confessed I'll be damned if my soul get repossessed Here I am Greetings, greetings, greetings. <laughs> greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name. <clears throat> At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus, He is Lord, He's above it all. And in Him, we live, we move, and we have our being. Oh, man. <clears throat> well... <laughs> May you be blessed to live in interesting times. May you be blessed to carry on with what it is that God has for you to do at such a time as this. With the reality of time actually even shifting, um, what people consider time is now being found out to actually be um, an illusion, a misconception. You know, there's, there's some amazing talks that are out there that are now physics and physicists are finally catching up to where the people of God have always been. You and I, we are eternal beings. We are in I am. And we're not temporal. We're not time bound. The worlders, they're time bound. <clears throat> the worlders, they're stuck in this paradigm and in this, um, this dimension. But for the child of God, you come from and part and you are part of a higher dimension a higher place something that is beyond that now the fallen angels they they knew what that once was and so there is a there is a resentment from them towards the child of god which and who will go and be part of that higher dimension in the higher place whereas their limitation is now into the second heavens at max, barred from the presence of God, and from there to be cast down even further as this thing concludes. Um, so as the child of God goes from glory to glory and strength to strength, they go from one level of damnation and separation to another. <laughs> and so now all in all of this, God is glorified. In all of this, the purposes and the plans of God are manifest. In all of this, we now continue on and do the will of the Father. Now, if it were not for Christ in you, the hope of glory, we would have no chance. If it was not for the, the power of God that is above it all, we would not have a single a person, would, a single one of us would not have any power over any of this. And we would be destroyed by it. So the challenge, we see what the challenge would be apart from Christ. And that's why Jesus told us too, apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, apart from him, we can do nothing. We, we have no ability and no strength in ourselves. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> I can do all things through the one that is above all, that he's the one that lives in me. And in him, you live and you move and you have your being. So, now 
we bring it forward into what it is that we're in the middle of right now, which is a time of unprecedented shifts, changes. And, you know, part of what's happening, part of what's shifting and changing is that God is moving. See, when God moves, the entire paradigm shifts. Before, if God didn't shift anything, if God didn't move anything from a higher dimension, all of these things will continue on as they always did. As the wave has continued to come in, as the wave has continued to flow, the result of that has been that everything else that once was is no longer the way that it was. So things that were um, people were able to do, be, um, manipulate, cause, and effect, all of those things no longer work. They don't work anymore. So, it's... The deals don't work. The manipulation doesn't work like it once did. The um, the games don't work like they once did. The satanic tactics don't work like they once did. And, you know, in true satanic fashion, they don't have another gear, so all they do is just up it... Um, as much as they can, they just keep trying to increase because, you know, they fulfill and follow the definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. But um, the old results don't come about anymore because the paradigm has shifted. Now, in the time of the paradigm shift, what's taken place is that the children of God have come online and the children of the world are being taken offline. They are being disconnected, dislodged from their source, um, disempowered. Meanwhile, the child of God is rising up in power and strength in the anointing and the spirit of the living God to do the works the Father has for him or her to do in such a time as this. Isn't it amazing that one shift something that is a blessing for one can be the undoing for another. Well, it's been the other way for a long time. In the old system, what was um, their strengthening was to our destruction. Babylon, Babylon, mystery, mother of harlots, in you is found all the blood of the prophets and the saints. Well, why is all the blood of the prophets and the saints inside of mystery Babylon? Well, where do they get their power from? Because they got no power in themselves, so they had to siphon it off of that which had power in itself, which was Christ in you, the hope of glory. So they would drain the power off the children of God. The life is in the blood. So they would, they would set up the situation and the scenario to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Now, for this, for this reason, Christ was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Well, the manifestation of Christ in you, the hope of glory, is to, one, is to eliminate the world's ability to siphon off the life of the children of God. So now, the worlders are starting to get into a panic because where are they going to go if they can't get the life from you? Where are they going to go if you step up and move into your power, your place, who it is that you are in Christ, where can they go now? Because they have no life in themselves. They, they're, they're empty vessels with nothing in them. They can only siphon life from something else that has life, but they have no creative source within them. Remember what Jesus said? Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. What else did he say? If you drink the water that I give you, it will become in you a, a spring of living water. Out of your bellies will flow living water. There is a source within you of life. You know, water is life. There's a source of you. Uh, there's a source within you of life. The worlders don't have that. They have no source. 
They have no power in and of themselves. They must steal it from you. And when you cut them off, they die. When you cut them off, they perish. This is what's terrifying to them. It's terrifying to them for you to wake up. It's terrifying for them for you to realize who you are. It's terrifying for them to, for you to move in the power that God has put inside of you. That is terrifying. Because if you do that, it's game over for them. Because a greater power is in you. If you bind something in Jesus' name according to his will, plan, and purpose, it is bound. And no matter what they do to try to unbind it, they can't. No matter what they do to try to fix that scenario, they can't. No matter what they do to try to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, they cannot. When you move in the power of the Spirit of the living God, things change. And when we don't, things don't change. When we forfeit who we are in Christ, then the slave system continues. And that's what the world is want. So now there's this desperate attempt right now to block out the light, this desperate attempt to try to enforce and to try to put things back together again, but it's not working. In fact, the more the worlders do what they do to try to keep the system going, the more it is that they actually reinforce their own destruction. Because they expose themselves. The more they scramble, the more that they expose themselves. So it is a it is a process that God has. He's he's doing this whole thing piece by piece. You know, in any time where God did a massive liberation, you see, I mean, I, I love the story of Exodus, uh, of the children of God, where Moses is bringing them out. And it didn't just happen on the first thing. There was, there was a series of events that took place where God was able to show himself strong and also hardening the heart of Pharaoh to also in that situation, be glorified in the confrontation against a wicked and evil king, a wicked and evil ruler. God was glorified in the decimation of worldly power and worldly strength when it came up against him and exalted itself against him. God is glorified in that. God is glorified in the showing forth of what's true power, what's true love. Jesus Christ showed true love. No greater love has a man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. Jesus, in the ultimate show of his love and care for us, laid down his life in a way you will never see in the world. You will never see people in the world do what Christ did for us. While we were yet sinners, he did that for us. You know, God loves the opportunity to show, to reveal, so that we may also understand. All creation earnestly groans for the revelation of the sons and the daughters of the living God. Creation is waiting, and God is showing. Through all that's going on and all that's taking place, God is showing. And this is a beautiful, incredible, amazing time to be alive. It's a time, brothers and sisters, to be in prayer. It's a time, brothers and sisters, to read the Word. You know, as you read the Word, as you pray... Things are gonna, you're just gonna see it. You're gonna see things in the scriptures you may never have seen before. You're gonna read things and they're just gonna pop off the page to you. You're gonna be encouraging one another. You're this this is gonna become so real. I mean, we're seeing cosmic clashes all over the place. We're seeing the scriptures manifest in real time all over the place. You know, there is no separation 
And as everything is being manifested and everything is being shown and everything is being revealed in this space, in this window, in this time, as there's a culmination, take heart. Because He, Christ Jesus, has overcome the world. Take heart. Don't be discouraged in the things that you see going on. Men's hearts around you may fail them for the things that they see coming upon the earth. But Jesus say, you know, when you see these things, you know, you know, don't well, don't be troubled. These things must come. You know the one that's in control. To live is Christ, to die is gain. But if you're gonna be here, this is well, hey, to live is about him. To be involved here is to be about our Father's business. And God is going to create and, and make the ways for that to happen and for that to be your focus, for that to be your discipline, for that to be your areas of involvement. And He's going, you're going to have so much fulfillment in what you do, so much purpose in the things that God leads you into. You're going to, going to understand more and more the reason that God has you here in this window. You know, so often people, they, they don't, when you're, when you're part of the world, you don't know why you live. When you're part of the world, you don't understand. But when you're in the kingdom, you know who you are. And when you know who you are, then you also know what you must do. Christ Jesus knew who he was, and he knew what he needed to do. It was not easy, but he knew what he needed to do. And God has given us, in Christ Jesus, the revelation of who we are. And as you move in the revelation of who you are in Christ, as you move in that revelation, you also will know and understand what you must do. And you'll have a compelling, you'll have a compulsion. And that compulsion will, will drive you. And that compulsion will draw and as Christ is lifted up, He's going to draw all people unto Himself. Christ will be lifted up through you. Just realize that it's you that is carrying that presence. But it's Christ in you that they're drawn to. And so point people towards Christ. You know, don't let it get stuck on you. Point people towards their salvation, their hope. And in that, you're going to see amazing and incredible things happen. So, as we continue on, just know that God's with us, brothers and sisters. We love you. Um, drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. We always love to hear from you. God bless you. Um, so much is going on. Just love being able to catch up with you on the fly. All right, we'll talk to you again sometime really soon. God bless you. Bye. Yesterday, baby.